Hello again and welcome to the second project in my in-depth series and today's subject is going to be a lidded box. There are many different ways of turning a lidded box, this is just one of them, but one that I tend to prefer. And I'll be going through in real time how I approach the actual turning, what I look for in the wood, and the only thing that I will skirt over is the sanding, because people don't want to see too much sanding on video. OK, without further ado, let's get turning this lidded box. So what I have here is a piece of cherry, uh, nice straight grain, which is what you're looking for with a box, especially to begin with, because then you've got more chance of lining up the grain when you've made your uh, parting mark there to separate the lid from the body to do your turning. So the straighter the grain, the easier and more likely you are to get a grain lining up nicely after you've turned it. Uh, this particular piece is a cylinder already, uh, it's about five inches long, which is a bit longer than you actually need, but I think if you're doing the box for the first time or a bit less experienced, then you want a bit more wood to, wood to work with, and um, it's about just over two and a half inches in diameter, so a small little trinket box. Now the first thing I like to do is to true up the ends and to put a tenon on either end, to then go into the chuck. So again, like with most things, the quicker you feel happier in uh, turning the RPMs, the better the cut and the better the experience. So I'm just going to take a parting tool here and just square off the ends. other end and now you want to form the tenon and for these particular jaws it's 56 mil but I like to go about 58 and about that sort of half the width So get your calipers. Now you can actually do it when it's running, but as again, if, if you're just starting, just stop the lathe and measure. And we're just on there, just right there. And we can do the same here. A little bit wider. Stop the lathe, check the diameter. And we're just right there. OK, so the next thing to do is to... I like to put it into the chuck now, ready, before we actually part the lid off. So just take off your... take out your drive centre and pop it into the chuck. Not a lot of difference on orientation here, whether which one we have for the lid. I think I'll go with that for the... I'll go with that. So, there, and I'll bring up the tailstock to your centre point so you can get it just in the centre, loosen off a little bit, just to make sure it's nice and central. There we are, a little bit of pressure, and then you can do up your chuck, and you'll find it's nice and central. There we are, absolutely perfect. Now, again, when you... This is going to be the lid, so this, this part here of the tenon will form part of the dome of the lid. So, we're looking at approximate thirds. So I'll take a thin parting tool. If you haven't got a thin parting tool, it doesn't matter. You can use a, a standard size parting tool. But then it's even more important to have straight grain to do the grain match. So let's look at where we're going to be parting off and the bottom of the box. So just to give us plenty of room to do the parting off, etc. That's going to be the sort of bottom of the box that I'm looking at. We'll be parting off there. So we're looking at approximate thirds. So if we say here, just about there. 
the parting off. So turn the lathe down because otherwise you can burn the wood. Not that it's a great problem here, uh, purely and simply because you've got to be turning and sanding anyway. But you don't need to go at massive speed when you're parting off. Just nice, fluent movement. And listen to that sound. As it gets higher and higher and higher. And then you can stop the lathe and you should be able to twist it off. If not, you just take a little bit more off. There we go. So that's twisted the lid off. And as you can see here, if I go to the other camera, there's a little bit of a burn mark there, but nothing much. Not that that matters because that's going to be turned away anyway. So I like to work on the body first. So remove the tailstock and remove the live center to save stabbing yourself in the elbow. And the next thing I like to do is to decide where I'm going to have the tenon and where I'm going to have the mortise. Well, I tend to prefer to, if I go to the overhead now, I tend to prefer to have um, the mortise on the lid, bearing in mind that this is the tenon, so the mortise will be here. And then, oh, sorry, the tenon will be here, and then a mortise in the actual body of the box, because then when you take the lid off, you haven't got the tenon sticking proud. The next thing to do is decide on the uh, width of your box and the hole. Now, the thing is, you can hollow out, obviously. The, one of the easiest methods is to use a force in a bit. So I'll set the force in a bit up now and then come back when we hollow out the middle. Now when you're measuring how deep you want to go, uh, make sure that you allow for the point on the force in a bit. Now I've made a mark just here, which will take me down to about that level there, which gives me more than enough room for the slight undercut and it allows me then to just dish out that point that the forstner the divot, if you like, that the Forstner bit will leave. Now, when you're using this, this Forstner bit is uh, 54 mil, so about 250, 300 RPM, and just nicely, lightly go in and So what I'll do now is I'll stop the camera and I'll tell you how long it took me to do this and come back. So that's just got to the depth I'm looking for and that took about five minutes because that force a bit actually is not as sharp as it could be so that's going to need a touch up. But anyway, it's a five minute job and you've got nice straight walls and uh, <coughs> it has the desired effect. And just check the, the depth and the depth comes down to, oh, hang on, let's try again. And the depth comes down to there, which is what we wanted. So that's all good. So the next thing to do now is to just tidy up the inside and what I like to do is to finish the inside, in other words to sand it and to put your finish on. So that's what we're going to do but we'll just tidy up first. I'll just take a little round nose scraper, uh, it can be a negative rake if you wish or an ordinary um, round nose scraper. This has got a slight negative rake on the top there. There we go. And what this does is just get rid of that, that hole, if you like, the force of it uh, creates. And you also get a nice dish in the bottom. Mm. 
this I think looks rather nice. But you can do what you wish. Let's have a check in there. Yeah, one more, one more little goal just in the middle. That's it, lovely. Yeah, that's got rid of it nicely and there's a nice dish in the bottom. So now we want to just refine the sides and there are several ways of doing that but again if you have got a, um, a box scraper of some sort then you can use that just to tidy up the, the, the sides and just to make them nice and smooth and that just aids it then when you when you're doing your sanding you haven't got to do so much sanding so now basically all we do is to sand the inside um, and I'll be sanding on this occasion I'll be sanding up to uh, 240 and then using True Grit and Hampshire Sheen. Now when you're sanding, one of the most important things is even pressure. But if you're doing sanding like this, you don't really want to put your fingers in. So a very easy method is a little bit of Velcro here, hook and loop, staple to a stick, to a dowel, and then you can get a pad. Even if you haven't got a pad, it doesn't matter. You can get the Velcro backed um, sanding discs and that fits onto there and then you just get your discs and you can use uh, use them all without any problem or chance of getting your fingers caught in there and it's nice to get to the bottom as well all you do is put the pad like so and then you put your sand, put your abrasive on there and you can get to the bottom as well. So all in all, pretty good idea. So we'll start off with 180 and just put the 180 on there. And again, normally I'd have the extraction going, but I won't do that for this. And again, nice, easy pressure. And whatever pressure you start off using, continue that pressure through the grades otherwise what's happening is you're going to have to do more abrading with a finer grit to get rid of the sanding marks of the previous grit because that's all these all sanding does is as you get finer that takes away the previously coarser grit okay so what I'll do now is I'll cut now this will take me I would think about five minutes so now we've got <coughs> to the stage where I'm going to put sanding sealer and I'm going to use a brush because it's easier to get it all the way down to the bottom so just this is the Hampshire Sheen pre-thin sanding sealer so cellular sanding sealer and just on the edges because I say I like to finish the inside and the rim and get all that finished and then we could work on the rest of the box let's give it a good coating because what I'm going to be using now is true grit because I've only um, <coughs> sanded up to 240 and that's the good thing with True Grit, an abrasive paste uh, which gives you a final finish of around a thousand grit. So then it saves all that fine dust if you haven't got proper dust extraction etc. And always with your sanding sealer make sure you get rid of the excess and then just allow it to go off which will be a couple of minutes. So again in the interest of boredom and time I'll just let that go off and I'll come back to you when we apply the true grit. 
So that's taken about five minutes to go off now, so I'm now going to apply the true grit and do it with a lathe stationery to begin with, uh, just to give a nice coating on the inside and the base. Now, if you're not happy with using your fingers in the box, same situations with the sanding, you can just wrap a bit of paper towel around your, your dowel, use a bit of my ever famous masking tape to just attach it and you can use that and change the towel on there as you need to. So again, starting with the, the lathe at about 500, start to just work the true grit in to your piece. Now the important thing with True Grit is that it does break down and it just takes two or three minutes, maybe four minutes, to get all the abrasive content in there broken down and as I say we'll leave you a finish a surface of approximately a thousand grit without the fine dust from the sanding. So just take your time and not quite as boring as the sanding part but the reason I'm doing this all the way through is because you need to see how it should be done. No great pressure just let the let the grit do the work and the revolutions of your piece and then take a clean part of uh, paper towel Increase the speed a little bit, up to about 700-800 RPM and just keep moving it around and again working with the same pressure. And if you apply the same method when applying your true grit and indeed your wax of finish, no massive pressure needed and that saves any streaking and gives a nice surface. Clean piece of paper towel and when the paper towel comes off clean then <coughs> all the excess and of the true grit has been used. You can see there, there's very little on the paper towel now. Another clean bit. Even if there's only a slight bit, just go back with a, a clean piece, clean area of your towel to make sure it's completely gone. see there there's nothing on there now so the your the true grit has done its job <coughs> and just feel it make sure it's not tacky so they can accept your wax of choice now in this case I'm going to be using Hamish Sheen high gloss and <coughs> that's just my preference you can use any finishing wax that you prefer and again you can do the same situation you can use your your dowel with paper with uh, paper towel attached to it if you so wish and again I like to apply it by hand well by hand I like to apply it with a lathe stopped The whole idea then is to burnish the wax in. Now what I'll do is I'll turn it up to about five or six hundred RPM just to begin with, just to work it in. And if you use the same method like you would on any other piece, work towards the edge so that you don't get any streaking. And again, same pressure throughout the whole operation.
Okay. Now, again, because of the ambient temperature and the humidity in the in the workshop, it's going to take a little bit of time, a bit extra time, if you like, to, to go off, because you want it to be at least four or five minutes, in my opinion, and in this case, it'll most probably be about seven or eight minutes because of the, as I say, the workshop um, temperatures. So I'll come back and then we'll do the final buffing and then the inside of the box will be finished. So what I've done is given it about 10 minutes and uh, it's ready to buff out now. And I've changed the camera angle slightly so hopefully you can see how nice the finish is inside. Um, I'm, the lathe is around 1200 RPM and again no excess pressure and just work your way to the edge. I'm hoping it'll show the shine. It does on the edge, but I can assure you it's really nice inside as well. And your final finish is only as good as your preparation. In other words, your sanding and making sure that you have no radial marks from your sanding and that you have no streaking from either your sanding sealer or your wax. And I will say again, you can use your uh, dowel with some paper towel attached to the end if you so wish. This is about as deep as I would go with my fingers anyway. And there we have it. The uh, inside of the box is now finished. And now we've got the lid mounted in the chuck on the tenon that I turned originally. Now there are two ways of making the tenon because it's going to fit inside the mortise of the box. You can either use compasses like so or a set of dividers making sure that it is bigger than you need because you can always take more wood off but you can't put wood on. Now if you use this method all you do is present the left leg to the wood, don't engage the right leg otherwise it'll spin like so and eyeball it and when the lines match up just there a little bit over okay so the outside line is around there so I'll just make a mark with a pencil on the outermost, just there, and we want to creep up on that now to make the tenon. And always you can f fit the, uh, the body to it. Now the decision is yours whether you want to have a tight fitting lid or a not so tight fitting lid. Now for this I like to use the round skew, it's not important, not absolutely um, essential to do that, but that's what I like to do. And bearing in mind that this is slightly bigger than we need. So don't take the full depth of your tenon to begin with, to leave you a little bit to play with. So we just go to there, turn off, and it's obviously too big. And now it's a case of just taking up to the line, and that's going to be too much as well, but it doesn't matter. And this is the uh, sort of time consuming bit, if you like. bit more and I'm doing this and not cutting this because it just gives you an idea we're not in a race there is absolutely no advantage of rushing and 
And the reason I like to use the <coughs> the round skew on this is it, it gives a nice square shoulder, which is what you want. Needy there. You want it quite tight to begin with, which will become evident later on. Just a little bit. No, we've got virtually got a fit there. So I'll take a little bit more down to that line there. And just a little chamfer on the edge. <coughs> yeah, just a slight bit more. Literally a micro. Now, that's a nice tight fit. Okay, it's a, a pot fit. Now the thing is, when you're sanding or whatever, if you sand that tenon, obviously only a slight amount, it's going to get looser. So that to me is ideal. So now I'm going to decide what thickness of tenon I want. It doesn't have to be that wide. So I'm just going to make a, uh, a cut here in the tenon. So that gives me something to work for, work to. Bear in mind this is the inside of the box, so now I'm going to take my 3-8 spindle gouge, drop it to rest slightly, and just hollow that out basically. And this, uh, what I've done here, allows me to have a register against And it also means that I've got a nice straight piece on the inside of the tenon. Now bear in mind you've got the, um, the tenon on, on the other side of, of this piece here which is going to form part of the lid but we won't be using all that. So all you're doing is hollowing or taking out to where you feel you want it to go. And all you're doing there is basically hollowing out a little bowl. I just increased the speed a bit there, it was a little bit low. Just nice gentle cuts. Now the thing is here, the, this dimension is going to be reduced because we're going to be attaching this to the body in a minute to get the final uh, dimension, the final shape. Maybe one more pass. No, you're not restricted to any sh any shape in there. You can have exactly what you want. Uh, that's a nice size for the tenon, gives it a bit of stability. 
We're not looking for a very thin, fine box here. Just going to take one more. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm not going to take any more off. So now I'm going to sand it, and then I will sand. I won't touch the tenon because I want it to be exactly the same uh, dimensions it is now so I'm just going to sand the inside so what I shall do now which will take me about 10 minutes I'll sand um, up to 240 Hampshire Sheen and I'll come back when I'm doing that and I'll tell you how long that took me to do so I've sanded to 240 uh, applied sanding sealer Hampshire Sheen. I'm just going to polish up the Hampshire Sheen. All remains to do now is just buff this up. Um, and I suppose it took me about, has taken me about 15 minutes in total to uh, finish the inside. Okay, so that's the inside of the lid finished and we haven't reduced the size of the tenon at all, still a nice snug fit. Okay, so now we've got to do the final shaping, so I'm going to put the body of the box back into the chuck. And this means I can finish shaping the um, the lid and the body to exactly as I want it. That's fine. Now, the whole idea of having a firm fit is that I can plonk that on there like so. Let's line up the grain so that we know what it's going to look like and this as I said is the advantage of having a straight grained piece of wood because however large your um, parting off line is you'll still get the grain to line up never work with dogs and grain animals and grain and kids there we go all right so what I'm going to do now is to just bring up the tailstock for a little bit of um, support nothing major just to stop the lid popping off which it shouldn't do anyway don't forget you've got that indent there so you're going to have to leave a little bit of a um, go down below there but we know how much we can do on that so I'll go to the overhead camera now and we can then see what I'm doing so what I aim to do now is to finish the shaping and the reason I'm doing it like this is I can blend everything in It's only going to be a small amount of shaping. I'm not going to have anything too um, stylish as it were, because the whole idea of this video is to show you the mechanics behind turning a box. Okay, so again, um, I'll take my half inch spindle gouge now. You could take a um, 3 8 bowl gouge if you haven't got a half inch and literally all we're going to do now is to just blend all this in give it some shape body mm. 
a bit more speed here. Now I can do whatever shape I like. I'm just going for a little bit of a taper. Let's get rid of this bit of wood here. Okay, that's going to be my part off line there. So we're just going to bring that down ever so slightly. Just get the curve to start there. Lifting the handle. Bringing it round. Yeah, I quite like that. So we'll bring the top around now. A little bit proud there. Okay, the excess wood. Just on here, nice light cut, pick up the cut. Yep, I like that. Yep, I reckon that's just about it. So one more from here. So now to give this a little bit more stability, I'm just going to use some masking tape and make sure that when you wrap that round, that you do it this way. So in other words, away from you, so that the, the, the final edge is against the travel. So that'll stop it unraveling and that will allow me to work on this with light cuts so again I'll just take my spindle gouge and work on that you could of course make that flat there and make it um, capable of accepting a finial slight little bit there just come out here a little bit more 
nice light cuts I like that shape Yep, that'll do. It'll sand out nicely. So that is one of the methods of being able to just get it all nice and neat all wrapping up. So what we'll do now is take the, um, the tape off and then what I'll do is sand him up and that final sanding will make it really nice and flush. So take off the tape, and there we've got the shape there now. So all I'm going to do is sand this up now and then we'll get the final end shape at the end, at the bottom and then part him off and then it'll be done. So I'll come back when I've done the sanding. Again, I'll let you know how long that takes because you don't want to watch me sanding. So I've sanded to 240, applied one coat of Hampshire Sheen pre-thin sanding sealer, true grit and one coat of uh, Hampshire Sheen and now I'm just going to buff that up and apart from parting off job will be done. There you go. I'll just go to the overhead just so that you can see the um, grain match. All matches up nicely. And again, I'll reiterate the importance of having a straight grained wood, which allows you a slightly wider parting cut on the lid and that grain will match up really nicely. Okay, so when parting off, don't forget to make a slight undercut so that it sits nicely on the edges. And we don't want it too thin because obviously it's a box, we want it to stay stable. So. I think just about there. Need your relief cut. And the thing is, when you're parting off, don't have the RPM too high because, as I say, you can burn. And when you get to the end of the cut, nice light cuts to reduce any tear out. parted off there was a little nub on the bottom there which I've taken off with the chisel all that I need to do now is just give it a quick stand and put a finish on I won't do that in the interests of time I will reiterate once again when you uh, are new to box turning and you want the grain to line up as near as possible try and get a straight parallel grain 
so that where the width of your part, when you part off the lid, is not as critical and there's more chance of the grain lining up like it does here. Well thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Cheers now.